Right, so this is the second video on the series on solving quadratic trinomials. Now in the first video we briefly explained that there's two different types of equations as far as we're concerned. Uh, a more simple type of equation that would look like this. The main thing being that there's no number beside the x squared. So we have a certain method for solving these type of equations and another method for solving these more complicated quadratic trinomials. Um, the again, the more important thing here is that we have actually a number here apart from 1. Okay, so if you remember, um, the method that we used to solve this one involved getting the factors of x squared and the factors of the third term here, minus 10. And that was relatively easy to do because uh, basically we didn't have a number here. Now, to contrast in contrast to that, have a look at this one here. Here we have 36x squared. So clearly it's not x times x, it's going to be a factor of 36. So now when you think about that, there's actually many factors of 36. So it could be 36x times 1x, or it could be 18x times 2x, or 12x times 3x, or 9x times 4x. So a whole bunch of possibilities there. Also, for the minus 4, it could be uh, 4 times 1, or it could be 2 times 2. So how do you know which one you have to take? Well, it just involves a whole bunch of trial and error if you are to use the method that we used up here. So rather than doing that, I mean, life is short, we don't need to do that. There is other ways of doing this that are much quicker. Right, so the first thing we're going to do here is we're going to multiply the first term by the last term, and place our answer in the middle here, right under the middle term. Okay, so what I've done here is I've drawn a line from 36x to minus 4, just to help me remember uh, the technique that I'm using here. Because it, it is a little bit complicated, uh, and using techniques like this, you know, using gui guidelines like this, is a way that I find helpful in terms of remembering how to solve the problem. Like It helps me kind of solidified the memory of the, the procedure that I used to solve the problem. So I advise you just when you're starting off to use this method just to help you remember how to do things. So um, so as I said we multiplied the 36x squared by the minus 4 and that gives us minus 144x squared. Sorry I forgot the squared. Now it's important to remember the sign as well. It's a plus by a minus so that gives you a minus. That's important. Don't leave that out. Right. Now, the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to place an a over the 7x and an m over the 144x squared. Again, this is just a memory aid, so you don't need to continue doing this once, but at the start it's a good idea to do it just to help you remember the, the technique that we used. Right, so what this means is that we're, we're going to try and get two terms here that multiply to give us minus 144x squared and that add to give us minus 7x. So two terms here that multiply to give us this, add to give us this. Now just like the previous uh, video, I advise you first of all to think about the signs before you think about the numbers. So in other words, ask yourself what two signs here will multiply to give you a minus. So that can only be a minus by a plus. So now we can think about the numbers. Now Unfortunately, with this method, you still have to do a certain amount of trial and error. So here we're going to have to try out a few a few um, factors and just see if if they both multiply to give you 144 and add to give you 7. Right, so this is a rather large number here. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to take a random guess. I'll say, let's, let's take the number 8. So if we divide 8 into 144... We, we can look that up in our calculator and we see we get 18. So if we set this equal to 18 and this equal to 8, when we add them we get minus 10. So not minus 7x, uh, so that's not quite right, but it's fairly close. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to raise that number 8 to 9, divide 9 into 144, and I get 16. Now 16 and 9 looks pretty promising, so if we put in a 16 here and a 9 here, definitely going to get uh, 7. So, and also when we multiply we get 144. 
It's important also to include the x's because when we multiply these, we have to get 144x squared. So x times x gives you x squared. Okay, so the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to drag down the 36x squared and also the minus 4. Again, I'd use these arrows just to help me remember this technique. Now, what am I doing here? I'm basically changing this equation into this one. The only difference is that instead of having a minus 7x in the middle, now we have minus 16x plus 9x. So why would we do that? Why would we make the equation longer? For the simple reason that we can now factorize this expression by grouping. So factorizing by grouping is that little bit easier than factorizing a quadratic equation. Therefore, it's of, of benefit to us to change this from a quadratic into factorizing by grouping. So up to now it's been a little bit complicated, but you'll be glad to know the rest of it is fairly straightforward, just factorizing by grouping. Now with factorizing by grouping, we take what's common in the first pair of terms and what's common in the second pair of terms. And don't worry too much if there's nothing in common here, like the, there isn't really here at the moment. What you can do is take 1 as a common factor. So don't worry if you see that. Don't think you have to rearrange things. It's fine. So now let's have a look at the first two factors here. Um, so first of all, you look at the numbers. What's common to the numbers? What number divides into both 36 and 16? The highest number you can think of would be 4. And we also have to look at any common letters. So we know that x goes into both of these, so we can take out x as well. So let's just be clear about this. 4x is the highest term that will divide into 36x squared and 16x. So that's literally what we have to do now. We have to divide 4x into 36x squared to get what goes here. So you do this by first of all dividing in the numbers. 4 into 36 goes 9 and then x into x squared goes x. And 4 into minus 16 goes minus 4 times, x into x just goes once. Now I don't bother writing in the 1 because 4 times 1 is just 4. Right, now we look at the second pair of terms. Uh, again here there's nothing in common as we said, we can just take 1 as the common factor. So we're going to use the sign that's here plus 1. So again we divide the 1 into the term here. 1 into 9x goes 9x times. And 1 into minus 4 goes minus 4 times. Now I'm sure you've noticed here that the 9x minus 4 repeats itself here. So in a sense 9x minus 4 is now a common factor. So what we're going to do next is we're going to take the 9x minus 4 outside just like we did with the 4x here and we're going to say that's the common factor and then if we divide the 9x minus 4 into the 9x minus 4 it goes once so that leaves us with 4x times 1 which is just 4x likewise here 9x minus 4 goes into 9x minus 4 once so you're left with 1 times 1 which is just plus 1 Okay, so we're almost done. All that remains now is to separate this equation into two equations by setting each factor equal to zero. And so we end up with two linear equations. And to solve these equations, all we have to do is bring the numbers to one side and leave the letters over here. So the term with the letter, we leave over here and we bring the number over here. So when we take the number across the equal to sign, it changes value. In other words, it does the opposite of what it was doing here. It was taking away. Now it's adding. Likewise, over here, we take the plus 1 over here. It becomes minus 1. So the final thing we have to do is get rid of the 9 here to leave us with just x on its own. So as the 9 here is multiplying by x, when we bring it across the equal to sign, it divides into 4. Likewise, the 4 multiplying by x here divides into the minus 1 on the other side. So we end up with two answers for x. Uh, x equals 4 over 9 and x equals minus 1 over 4. 
So just to recap on, on this video, we, we've said that there's two main types of quadratic trinomial equations. And the, the first type, the more simple one, is where you don't have a number next to the x squared. Second type, the more complex one, is where you do have a number bef beside the x squared. And when you do, you need to use a slightly different method of solving that equation. So the method is as follows. First of all, we multiply the first term by the last term, put our answer in the middle here, we label these two terms a and m, and then we try to figure out two terms that will multiply to give us minus 144x squared and add to give us minus 7x in this particular instance. Right, so once we've done that, we can convert this quadratic equation into uh, a, 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 an equation that we can factorize by grouping. So now that we have the four terms for grouping, it's a fairly, fairly straightforward from here on in. We just factorize it by grouping. We end up with our two factors. And then, we, as usual, we split the two factors into two equations, setting each factor equal to zero. And then we solve each of those equations to get the two values of x that we know we always get when we have a quadratic equation. Now, one thing that bears mentioning also is the fact that you can also use what's called the minus b formula to get the answers for any quadratic equation. Now, I don't tend to use that formula for these type of questions uh, because I think it's slightly quicker to use this method. But if you're not confident about this, um, you can certainly use the minus b formula and you will get the same answers.